What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I am super excited because I finally get to show off the new Kados Edge 2. Now I've had this in my possession for the last two weeks. I've been doing a lot of testing on it and this thing is an absolute beast. It's an ARM-based SBC with 16 gigabytes of RAM and it's turning out to be the most powerful ARM-based single board computer that I've ever been able to get my hands on. Personally, I'm a huge fan of this thing. Performance is out of this world when it comes to a small form factor ARM-based PC like this. And if you're not familiar with Kados, they make the Vim line of SBCs, and recently they released the Vim 4, and when it was initially announced, I was really hoping it was going to be using this same CPU here, because I know what kind of performance this thing can put out. And in this video, we're going to be running a full-fledged desktop operating system on the Edge 2. And yeah, I can tell you right off the bat that you could use this as your everyday PC. It's putting out that kind of performance. Before we jump into the specs and testing, I did want to give you a quick size comparison between the Raspberry Pi 4 and the Edge 2. As you can see, they're kind of right on par with each other, but the Edge 2 is coming in thinner, even with the included heatsink. So the heatsink here is a really awesome design. They've actually been using this on a lot of their Edge and Vim boards. And it does a great job cooling off this SoC. Now, when it comes to I.O., I really do wish they would have added Ethernet here, but I completely understand what they were going with. It does have built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, so that's definitely a plus. And over here, as you can see, we've got two full-size USB ports. One of these is USB 2.0, the other is 3.1. Full-size HDMI 2.1 port right in the middle, and two USB Type-C ports. Now, one of these is only for power delivery, but the other one is a full-function USB Type-C port, and it does support DisplayPort 1.4 out. I kind of wish it supported alt mode, that way we would only need one USB Type-C cable with a USB Type-C monitor, but I'm good to go with what they have here. I think we do have plenty of I.O. Having that extra Ethernet would have been nice, but I can deal with the Wi-Fi 6 they have built in. So like I mentioned, this thing performs absolutely amazingly, and it really comes down to the SoC they chose to use in the new Edge 2, because we've got that RK3588. It's an 8-core SoC, we've got four A76 cores running at 2.25 GHz, we've got four more A55 cores running at 1.8, and the CPU performance here is great, but the main claim to fame to the RK3588 is the GPU. We've got the Mali G610 MP4 up to 1 GHz, and this can definitely get the job done. When it comes to RAM, they'll be offering this board in two variants, 8 or 16, but with both we get LPDDR4X at 2133 MHz, and I've got the 16 GB model here. This also has 64 gigabytes of internal eMMC storage. It also has Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2 built in. This will support touch displays or non-touch displays and up to three cameras using the MIPI connections on the bottom. I mean, there's a lot to this board and if you're interested in checking out the full specs, I'll leave a link to the website. But when it comes to the operating systems, right now at the time of making this video, we've got Android 12, Ubuntu 22.04 desktop and server. So we've got three operating systems to choose from at the time of making this video, but this is the initial release and I'm sure more will be added. And just like the Vim 4, the Edge 2 does support their UWOW installer, which is really awesome. We'll take a look at that. Basically, what I'm going to be using here is just a PD charger with a USB Type-C cable to power this thing up. Okay, so first things first, I wanted to give you a look at their built-in installer. Personally, I call it UWOW. I think this needs to be on every single board computer. This is an online installer that's built into the board. So you can plug into Ethernet or you can connect to Wi-Fi from here. But if we choose Continue, we've got Wi-Fi connected. And it's actually going to look for the newest images for this Kados board. We've got Android, Ubuntu, and this is exactly what we're going to be using today. But uh, another couple cool things here. We've got a ton of options, so we just took a look at the wizard, uh, we can check out the system, online scripts, advanced, get fun. Now I know not a lot of people are going to be into this, but I thought it was pretty cool. But right here, basically in the BIOS, Tetris. Pretty cool little feature though. So we can back right up. I just thought that was cool and I definitely wanted to show it off. But yeah, I really do think that uh, a lot of these single board computer manufacturers need to come up with something like this because it's awesome. You can go through here, get updated, you can install new images, and it's very easy to do. But I've already got Ubuntu installed here, so we'll go ahead and reboot the system. Okay, so here it is. And yeah, this thing is really quick. Uh, to tell you the truth, 
If I wasn't looking at the single board computer and didn't really go into the specs at all, I'd say this was an x86 PC. Really great performance on the CPU and especially on the GPU side of things. Now stuff will be improved down the road and like I mentioned there is a version of Android available, but I really wanted to see how this would function as a desktop PC. And overall, this chip can definitely handle it. I'm very, very impressed. So if I open up Terminal here and uh, we can run NeoFetch. As you can see, Ubuntu 22.04, so we are on Jammy Jellyfish. And the CPU speed here is only detecting the lower clock speeds, but we've got 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is more than enough for a single board computer. But remember, they do sell an eight gigabyte model for a little cheaper, and I'd say that's really all you would need. For this, we used the UWOW installer. I'm fully up to date here, and I've installed some applications. Now, one thing that wasn't pre-installed was the Software Center, or GNOME software, as it's known with the newer versions of Ubuntu. But from here, we can go in and basically download any apps without having to touch Terminal at all. And I've got a bunch of stuff that we're going to be testing out. So if we head over here to the Play section, you can scroll on down, find what you want to play. Not a lot of super great games here, but when it comes to emulators, there's a bunch of stuff that we can run. Now, there were a couple that I couldn't get running right now with this version, and one of them I really wanted to test, which was the Dolphin emulator. But luckily, I was actually able to get PS2 up and running, because EtherSX2 is actually available for ARM desktops from their official website. So if you go over to EtherSX2.com to the download section, you can get the desktop version. It's an app image and it'll start right up. And we're going to be testing this out because performance is great here. But yeah, when it comes to like emulation, personally, I would probably just go with Android on this board. They've got the Android 12 version. You can download and install all of your favorite emulators, but with a little work, you can do it in desktop mode also. So the very first thing I wanted to take a look at here was just a little bit of web browsing. So we'll go ahead and open up Chromium and head over to Kadas's website, if I spelled that correctly, yeah. And this thing I mean, it loads up these web pages no problem at all. So I know there's not a lot here. Let's go uh, we'll learn more about OOWL, which is something that I wish a lot of these single board computer manufacturers would come up with. This is one of the best things that's happened to single board computers in a long time, and I think it's a little overlooked when it comes to Gadas's boards. But yeah, this is brand new for the Vim 4 and the Edge 2. Really awesome software. Let's head somewhere that just has a lot of images. I want to see how fast this loads up. Head over to Amazon real quick. I mean, there's no trickery going on. This thing is super quick. Next thing I wanted to do was take a look at some YouTube video playback. Now with this, drivers still need a little bit of work, especially for 4K video playback. And this GPU and CPU combo with the correct drivers is actually capable of doing 8K 60 FPS. Some of the Android versions out there for these boards with these chips can do 8K playback. But if you're into these single board computers, you know it's a bit different with the desktop. So let's head over to 4K60 demo. And let me find something. Here we go. Okay, so we'll go to 1080p. All right, so we'll go to 1080p. I've got stats for nerds on, and we do get a few drop frames here at 1080p, but it's something you'd never notice if you didn't have stats for nerds on. As you can see up in the top left hand corner, getting a few here and there, but overall not bad at all. And it's definitely not ready for 4K playback, at least in desktop mode right now. It was actually getting a lot of drop frames. It would kind of just stop all of a sudden and then it would be smooth and then drop a bunch of frames. It's kind of all over the place when it comes to 4K, but going full screen with 1080p, no stats for nerds on, this is really great video playback. So yeah, actually really great performance when it comes to web browsing and video playback from YouTube. Another couple apps that I downloaded here were uh, GIMP, photo editing. This is basically free Photoshop. And yeah, it'll work out great here. I mean, this actually does work pretty decent even on the Raspberry Pi 4, so you can expect a lot faster times here. But really, one of the main things I wanted to test here was some emulation and gaming. So I showed you that we've got that PS2 emulator installed. I also wanted to test Open Morrowind. So if you're not familiar with this, uh, this is actually really awesome. You will need the original Morrowind game, but it'll allow you to run it on ARM devices. We'll take a look at that after we take a look at some PS2 emulation. Let me go ahead and launch this one more time. So you can download this from the EtherSX2 website, EtherSX2.com. We'll just go ahead and start up Gran Turismo 4. If I go to settings, 
Graphics, Rendering, we're at 3x here using the OpenGL backend, and I don't have any extra hacks on. Let me go ahead and load up this save real quick. And I've got an 8-bit dough controller connected, so it should connect in one second. There we go. And right now... Yeah, this is really great performance. OpenGL, 3x resolution, Gran Turismo 4, running at full speed. Got a couple dips here and there, nothing too major. This is definitely playable. And when it comes to this PS2 emulator, it's definitely come a long way in a little time. Awesome to see this on an ARM-based single board computer. So we'll test out a couple more here. This is an easier game to emulate than uh, Gran Turismo 4 was, and with this, I can take it up to 5x resolution. Unfortunately, trying to go up to 4K, it does dip down quite a bit, but if we head up here to our graphic settings, you can see that we're at 5x here. So yeah, this GPU is putting out some really good performance, and keep in mind that Ether SX2 on an ARM desktop is still in alpha. This will get better over time. All right, so the last thing I wanted to test here was Open Morrowind, just to show you how this performs. Uh, really awesome, actually. We'll go ahead and start it up. All right, jumping right into a little bit of gameplay. I wanted to get out of the ship just to show you how this performs. We're at 720p, and using this on the board, I mean, this feels really good. Not bad at all, and there's a chance I could actually up the resolution here, but I'd say 720p still looks pretty decent given how old the game is. Open Morrowind is absolutely amazing, and I have tested it in the past on a few different single board computers, but this is some of the best performance I've seen so far. So yeah, this is a really great performing single board computer, and I will have a few more videos coming up, so if there's anything else you want to see running on the Edge 2, let me know in the comments below. I will have a full Android 12 video coming up, but I wanted to get, you know, Ubuntu out of the way first, and this is really, really awesome. If you're interested in learning more about the Edge 2, I will leave a link to Gadas's website in the description. And I'd also like to know your thoughts on the performance you saw in this video. Is this something you'd think about buying at the right price? Let me know down below. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.